A huge eventful group welcome to all of you for joining us here today. I'm Steve Morris from the eventful group. And this is our second webinar in our series of the Mastering SAP webinars. We're running sometimes one, sometimes a few webinars between now and the Mastering SAP conference in October each month. So uh, thanks so much for joining us today. We're in for a huge treat. Today's webinar is entitled Preparing Your SAP Landscape, Complete Stack Compliance. It's hosted by our great friends at Tricentis, who are the diamond sponsors of the Mastering SAP event in October. Uh, we will see a conversation between SAP mentor and guru, Tony De Thomasis and Tricentis' director of solution architecture, Carl Wood. I'll introduce you to Tony and Carl momentarily. Just before I do a few matters of housekeeping, the first, is that the second half hour of this webinar is in fact a dialogue between Tony and Carl, and we're inviting you, the audience, to participate as much as possible. So click on the question tab and fire away. We hopefully get to all of your questions. Those that we can't get to, we'll certainly answer them afterwards and send you those answers. So please, any questions you have, we really have some experts here, fire away with those questions. And then the second piece of housekeeping is the resources tab. There's a tab you can click on, and we've got a fortune of resources there for you. So please download those, make use of them. They're going to be uh, very, very valuable. So let me tell you about our two speakers before I hand over to Tony. The first, as I mentioned, is Tony De Thomasis, SAP mentor and guru, acclaimed all over the world for his excellence in the SAP space. 20 years in the industry, Tony worked on the R2 implementation at Mobile Oil back in the day, and since then has worked at many of Australia's biggest organizations, BHP, Billiton, Coles, Meyer, National Australia Bank, uh, Spotless, Aussie Post, Telstra. So uh, we really are in for a treat with Tony. And then we've got Carl Wood, who, as I mentioned from our sponsors, the head of solution architects for APAC, for Tricentis. Carl's been in the industry for 15 years. His absolute area of speciality is complex integration work. He's done work at Singtel Optus at Vodafone, at Macquarie, at Toyota Financial Services. So a really hot panel for you to tap into. So with that, I'll hand straight over to you, Tony. Take it away. Thanks very much, Steve. So welcome to um, um, the, uh, well, my first presentation from wherever you are. It's uh, afternoon in uh, sunny Melbourne. Uh, welcome to my study. Uh, it's a little bit cold outside. It's around 16 degrees. I've got the old long sleeves on. Uh, it might be cold outside, folks, but it's certainly going to be hot in here. Let's uh, run through some of these things that I've uh, pulled together for you. So initially, I struggled with the name for this particular presentation. Uh, I really struggled with the year. Uh, initially, we were going to call it uh, 2023 or 2027, but SAP keeps changing the goalposts. So we called it uh, 2020X. So let me, let me uh, introduce some of the topics that we're going to go through. Uh, today. So first things first, who of us uh, understands the SAP maintenance strategy? There are not many people who can uh, raise their hands to that question. So I'm going to explain all the things you need to know about the SAP maintenance strategy. Then I'm going to launch into two uh, very exciting accelerators that SAP uh, is providing for the, for the customers. One is the next generation BSR. The second is the readiness check. And then we're going to have a bit of fun with the audience. We're going to uh, run a, a, a quick little poll to determine uh, where your most effective path uh, to S4HANA might lead. Uh, and then we're going to see if it changes uh, over the uh, trajectory of uh, this presentation. So as Steve said earlier, I have curated a treasure trove uh, of uh, maintenance uh, and um, uh, improvement accelerators. So you know, if, you know yourself, if you do the search for S4HANA um, migration or S4HANA conversion, how many hits you get, how to determine or how to discern what is useful and what is not useful, uh, the treasure trove will be your best friend. So without further ado, let's uh, launch into uh, the understanding of the maintenance strategy. So on February the 4th, it's, it seems so long ago. On February the 4th, uh, our friends at SAP announced uh, the maintenance strategy commitments. So they announced no, with no surprise that S4HANA would be supported forever, that is uh, for the next 20 years. Can you imagine uh, Microsoft or Oracle um, 
<laughs> claiming support for a product for 20 years. It's uh, it's not really the done thing, but uh, there it is. Uh, SAP's commitment to West Fahana is brilliant. So they've stated the next 20 years, we're, we're good to go. The other thing that was announced uh, was uh, mainstream support was offered until 2027 for ERP, or, or, or some of our friends may remember it, uh, ECC or R3, CRM7, SCM7 and SRM7. Uh, and of course, uh, those who had taken the plunge and um, upgraded your ECC to a thing called Suite on HANA. So SAP announced back in February that that was going to be supported until 2027. So what they also um, announced was uh, there was an opportunity um, to take extended maintenance. So it wasn't offered to everybody, but it was offered at a 2% uh, premium if you were willing to uh, you know, put, 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 your, put your hand up that you were going to do a conversion to S4HANA. So if those things are true, then you qualify for the uh, extended maintenance until 2030. So that's the extra three years beyond 2027. And then of course, for those customers who wanna stick with it uh, with some of the old versions beyond 2030, uh, there's an opportunity to take customer specific maintenance. So we've run through, I count three acronyms here. So we run through uh, a, a thing called mainstream maintenance. We run through a thing called extended maintenance and we, we ran through a thing called uh, customer specific maintenance. So let's, let's understand exactly what they are. So from the top down, Mainstream maintenance, this is what you pay uh, SAP for uh, with your 20 or 21% maintenance. So you have uh, a written agreement uh, with SAP and all the terms and conditions uh, are written in this link. Uh, this link um, will be provided uh, as part of the materials uh, and the downloaded PDF is in the treasure trove uh, that, that you'll find uh, very useful at the end of the, uh, at the, end of the session. Let's, let's talk about extended maintenance. So what extended maintenance is, uh, it's, a th it's a three year agreement at an additional 2%. So th think that through. So whatever your maintenance is, add 2% to that. And the scope is not exactly the same as mainstream maintenance, it's similar. So in order to qualify for extended maintenance, the customers need to request a quotation through your SAP account executive. So keep that in mind, it's not automatic. You've actually got to uh, nominate yourself as wanting to uh, um, purchase extended maintenance. And then depending on what you got, you'll either qualify or not. So it, here's, here's the kicker. The, the most interesting uh, part of the discussion today will be determining which, which of you out there actually understands what customer specific maintenance is. So customer specific maintenance is the standard support charges still apply, but get get this, uh, I can't believe I'm gonna read this, but here we go. There are no delivery of any further legal patches, support packages, kernel revisions, Java patches, or front end patches. I'll pause, you, you think about that, right? So the customer pays for the expense of solving any complex problems. The service level agreement for uh, incident response time, there, there is none. Uh, remote support, there is none. Uh, and product support documentation may or may not be available. So for those who are wanting to stay on your uh, favorite uh, 3.1H version of uh, R3, um, you're well into uh, customer specific maintenance uh, if, if you've got some maintenance agreement. So far, so good. So we all understand uh, the dates that SAP have offered so far uh, and then the type of uh, maintenance phases. Let's deep dive into some of the dates. So the mainstream maintenance for SAP ECC, you must be on enhancement pack six, seven or eight. Anything less than six, you're, you are out of luck from uh, this discussion. You are, you're pretty much uh, in the red already. So the green indicates the mainstream maintenance. So with the uh, SAP announcement, you've got until uh, end of 2027, happy days. So you've got seven, seven years to decide what you do, and then you can vote for or opt into extended maintenance or customer specific maintenance, depending on your thing. If you're uh, ECC um, enhancement pack five, um, uh, zero to five, 
you've got until 2025, uh, end of 2025, before you need to make you need to make some sort of move. If you're anything less than that, so if you're in the uh, old R3 or in the old uh, ERP realm, end of this year, you're out of luck. So you're into customer specific maintenance. And there was uh, there was a, there was actually two announcements for the maintenance. The first one was on February the fourth. That was the the magic 2027 day. But the second announcement uh, was made on April 17. And what what SAP had realised is that they made an announcement for the big the big kicker, the ECC system, but they forgot about uh, the old friends, uh, the PO, the process orchestration, the EP, the enterprise portal, and the BW. Um, the SAP business warehouse systems. So they initially were left out into the what were left out in the cold until the end of 2024. And everyone well the the, the Deutsch support uh, user group come back and they said look look here you need to straighten out the dates. So SAP went back uh, in, into their huddle and they came back with the uh, 2027 date for all products. So the 2027 date uh, is explained for the non-ECC uh, um, um, package of systems uh, in a particular SAP note. So those who want to scribble it down, it's uh, note 1648480. So if you wanted to find out what happens to my process orchestration system or my enterprise portal uh, beyond uh, 2024, you, you need to look at that uh, SAP note. But uh, just understand this, uh, the pretty much the entire stack, unless you run really old stuff, so the entire stack should be supported until 2027 in mainstream maintenance. So you don't really need to make an agreement uh, for extended customer or, or anything else um, before 2027. That's only the SAP part of the maintenance strategy. We don't run SAP on thin air, unfortunately. We run uh, SAP uh, on an operating system and on, and on a database management system. So if you're not fortunate enough already to be uh, on a supported version of the HANA database, you're either running on uh, Oracle, uh, Microsoft SQL, uh, or on um, uh, um, uh, DB2 from, from IBM. So everyone here uh, needs to consider the full stack when you're looking at the maintenance strategy, not just the SAP systems. So if you're in Oracle, you've either got uh, 11, 12 or, or something else. So most customers uh, from an Oracle perspective were on 12 something. So initially you'd, you'd you find that uh, Oracle 11.2 runs out at the end of this year. Oracle 12.1 runs out somewhere in 2022. Uh, and unfortunately, Oracle 12.2 ran out before 12.102. It just didn't make sense. So Oracle went uh, into a huddle. So after SAP made their announcement, uh, Oracle came back in May, so uh, this month, uh, and they offered uh, a fantastic thing called the limited error correction. So essentially, they gave 16 months uh, additional support with no fees. So why am I so interested in 12.2? 12.2 is probably the best release uh, of Oracle from a feature perspective. Uh, if you're running SAP, you pick up the advanced index compression, the, uh, that's the high compression. You get the uh, real application cluster multi-instance uh, opportunity, and you have the max protection uh, option uh, of Oracle DataGuard. So it's probably a key release uh, from Oracle. In parallel, Oracle released 12.203 and 12.204. The market has got a hold of these numbers and unfortunately renamed them to 18.5 and 19.5 respectively. So if you hear Oracle 18.5, 8, what they really mean is 12.2.03. And if you hear 19.5, what they mean is 12.204. So 12.203 and 12.204 or 18 and 19 will only take you to around uh, 2020 thereabouts, right? At 2022 or thereabouts. So it, again, a, a lot of the other companies, not non SAP, they, they're going to struggle to offer you 20 years support on anything. So what SAP have, uh, what the Oracle have announced uh, is that uh, the new version of Oracle 20C or 21C, uh, this version becomes available before the end of this calendar year. 
uh, and they're they're looking at uh, long long term support. So uh, the LTS, so looking long term support of 20 and 21, and that should take you to 2030. What do you run your Oracle on? Uh, probably on Solaris. So if you're on Solaris 10, you are you're out of luck. Uh, end of this year, Solaris 11 is the thing for you. Uh, picking up the pace a little bit, uh, the Microsoft maintenance strategy. So the, the best version of uh, SQL Server is 2017 or 2014. So these are the two uh, most popular ones. The numbers inside the brackets there, the internal version numbers. So if you're asking for SQL 14, you're probably talking about 2017. So um, Microsoft have just announced uh, SQL 2019. This has got long-term support. This is the one you want to gun to. So if you want to get your, um, your maintenance uh, strategy in order, uh, I would recommend uh, the uh, correct version of uh, the um, operating system and the database system as well as uh, the SAP versions. So we're on to 2019 is, uh, is the preferred one. Um, you would have also uh, looked at uh, Windows Server 2019, so that, that's been recently supported by SAP. And there is uh, talk about, um, SA, about um, Microsoft releasing a Windows Server 2020. So I saw some, inter some uh, internal uh, code names for this release, but um, nothing's been announced formally. So again, look, look out with, with the maintenance strategy, you must look out for uh, your OS uh, and your DB if you're not on HANA. But you're on HANA, someone said. So he, he, here's, here's a most interesting view of the way SAP supports its own database. So you'll notice the size of the green bars are very, very short. Uh, what this means, what this indicates to me is that um, SAP never really got into a long-term support cycle for the HANA versions. So the old HANA 1, uh, the only supported version is SP12. So that's going to be supported into 2021. And get this, if you've got HANA 2 on anything less than SP5, you're out of luck uh, halfway through 2021. So you want to get your skates on if you've got your suite on HANA or, or if you've got a HANA database somewhere in the uh, in the landscape, which is less than SP5, you want to get your skates on and get uh, SP5 under your belt straight away. So SP5 is the first uh, long-term support version. And then from here on in, SAP is announcing uh, SP6, uh, which it was due end of May, early June, but I think because of the pandemic that this, this might change. So this, this hasn't been uh, officially released yet, but it's, um, it's nominated to be released. Uh, and then the, uh, the versions of um, uh, SLES, uh, I, I stuck them down here, that's, that's your SUSE Linux. Uh, again, the one, the one to shoot for is 15, that, that'd be my choice. I didn't. I didn't bother about putting the uh, Red Hat ones, or I didn't put the. Um, there, there was another slide for IBM, but how, how many? How many? How many slides could you could you possibly go through for the maintenance strategy? So, I have put the um, uh, the attachments in each of the hyperlinks in the treasure trove, so you will get those at the at the end of the session. So, uh, do we want to have a quick look? If there's any questions that I should uh, maybe slot in uh, here, or, or are we good to go? Apart from uh, a bit of feedback, um, I don't see any any questions directed. Uh, I think Steve, you, you, one... you put your hand up if you got one. What do you got? Yeah, I think we've got one question here, um, Tony from Ivan, who said, "Are there any you know gotchas around the Oracle Exadata migration? Perhaps you could touch on." Exadata, was it? Yes. Geez, uh, Exadata, you're in, uh, Ivan, mate. You're in. You're in the elite group. Uh, it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't largely adopted uh, in the um, uh, in the SAP family. Um, so uh, the only thing I can mention is that you raise um, a ticket with SAP uh, in the competency center. They have uh, two uh, very, very uh, experienced uh, Oracle. Uh, uh, guys that I've dealt with, uh, Christian and um, uh, Lamb. So uh, if you raise a ticket asking that specific question about RAC, they, they SAP flick it onto the Oracle Competency Center and you'll end, you'll end up getting a reply from an Oracle engineer. So uh, I don't want to give you the, uh, the wrong advice, uh, but I also want to tell you about um, the SAP on Oracle development update. 
Um, if you haven't been reading these, you want to start downloading these. Uh, one of the, the latest one, the May edition of the development update is in the treasure trove. So you can have a look at that and then register yourself. Uh, and there's always uh, tips and tricks uh, and then um, offers uh, to get um, uh, the latest information on supportability. W wishy washy enough, Carl. <laughs> I think that's answered succinctly. Thank you very much, Tony. <laughs> So um, in, uh, in the interest of getting through some of these slides, if it was up to me, we would run uh, double uh, my time slot. So we would run for an hour and we still wouldn't get through it. So normally I would run through uh, these, these things here. So I'm going to cover only the stack compliance today. But you, you know, guys, you know how much fun I would have going through the optimization and reduction and the stack modernization. I would get a chance to tell you how to go through the SAP custom code and uh, how to reduce using your data volume management and in the stack modernization, goodness me, we would talk about NVMe based flash storage. We would talk about uh, some of the fantastic uh, um, offers from IBM in the power space on premise. We would talk about AWS and um, Azure developments. Uh, anyway, Steve, we'll have, you'll have to uh, load up uh, the advertising machine for the next sessions. We're going to have so much fun in the, in the next two. Let's start with stack compliance because unless we get the uh, the old stack compliance, we're not going anywhere. So the first thing I'm going to recommend is uh, well, I'm going to recommend two things, right? So obviously the BSR. So your best friend here uh, is some of the free accelerators that you you're entitled to uh, as part of your enterprise support uh, entitlements. The first one is the next generation business scenario recommendation. So this thing here um, t is a service from SAP. You send uh, all your uh, usage uh, statistics for the last uh, X months. You send it through uh, to SAP. SAP come back and they cl closely scrutinize your entire landscape. They, they, they have a look at your um, large tables, your custom code, your batch jobs, your interfaces. And most importantly, they analyze your business processes to make sure that you're actually uh, uh, somewhere within the uh, somewhere within the green zone, um, from a comparison to um, other um, other peers within your uh, line of business. Uh, the second one I'm going to talk about uh, is the readiness check. So if you're serious uh, about preparing your system for the inevitable uh, migration or uh, so let's let's call it conversion, or um, uh, um, or not, you would look at the readiness check. So this does a very, very thorough preparation from a technical perspective of what you got uh, and helps you to front end load the exercise to do a lot of things right now uh, before the actual conversion takes place. Uh, and then we're going to have a bit of fun. We're going to determine uh, what your best path is. So I'm going to explain Greenfield. I'm going to explain Brownfield and um, I'm going to talk around Bluefield. <laughs> So let's talk about the uh, the BSR. So again, uh, this will help me determine uh, the best uh, approach for the S4 HANA. This helps me to build a business case to actually get approval for the funding. Uh, and this will tell me about uh, the usage patterns of my system and compare me against industry benchmarks. Uh, as always, anything that I talk about, uh, I'll help you to help yourself. There's some uh, very, very nice uh, linkages to the notes you need to read. Uh, I've also given you some very, very nice next steps, a sample report, a how-to, uh, and then um, introduce yourself to the uh, innovation uh, optimization pathfinder, which is the cheaper, the cheaper cousin of the BSR. So if you don't want to do the full-on BSR, you can do this uh, optimization pathfinder, which is a very, very nice subset. So without further ado, normally I would log on to a system and we, we would um, you know, scramble through a system, uh, modern technology. I've recorded this uh, earlier on. The next thing I want to talk to you about is the readiness check. So uh, this is critical guidance in preparation for the transition S4 So th th this is the, the step after you get approval um, to do your uh, migration to S4 HANA. You run this bad boy. It'll come back with um, a very, very nice um, uh, Fury based uh, set of uh, tiles, uh, which does a deep dive into your system. My favorite parts is when it looks into the um, the BW um, uh, um, connectors uh, and extractors, uh, when it looks into the 
uh, some of the ins and outs of your business processes and it, when, it, when it looks through a thing called the, the simplification list. So everybody knows uh, that R3 and S4 are two different beasts. So the main, the main things to understand is um, the introduction of a business partner now. So that changes the way the customer, customers and vendors uh, are stored. So there's a, 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 a look. It's not to be scoffed at. There, there is a conversion effort here. So let me let me explain. It's not an upgrade. It, it is a conversion. So as usual, I give the tips um, uh, to get prepared for the readiness check. Uh, and then the next steps, uh, look in the treasure trove. So I, I give you every one of those hyperlinks, the document which is attached with it. Now, my presentation wouldn't be my presentation unless I give you an absolute ton of uh, bonus uh, information. So I want to I want to spend a couple of minutes uh, speaking about um, the SAP Advisory Centre. So they've got a couple of fantastic efforts, uh, a couple of fantastic offers on at the moment. The S4 HANA Journey Check, I really recommend you have a look at this. Uh, the Guides, G-O-I-D-E-S, so E-S stands for Enterprise Support. Uh, they've got a, a brand new methodology uh, for the migration uh, or the conversion to, to S4 HANA. Uh, and then they've got uh, a transition using a new implementation. So that's not to be missed. The enterprise support uh, value maps. So, so again, all of these offers are free. So I'm not, I'm not going to show you a premium one. I'm going to show you the freemium ones, right? So the uh, enterprise support value maps, again, not to be missed. If you haven't logged on to the enterprise support value maps, you need to do that straight away after this uh, after this session. So that's got a predefined learning path, uh, and and so many uh, accelerators and and so much uh, learning opportunity here, uh, not to be missed. Uh, the One Support Portal, so I've shown you the video for the Early Watch Alert workspace. There's a couple of other kickers in there, the DVM uh, and the Custom Code Portal. Uh, look out for those. Um, okay, now we get to the really, really cool stuff. The S4 HANA Adoption Starter Engagement, that's a six-week free engagement from SAP, not to be missed. Uh, the Enterprise Support Guides, so I put this in twice because it's uh, so important. So my favorite thing in here is the live must-know webinars. So this covers the CVI approach. Uh, this is the customer vendor um, in integration approach. This is how to change from business processes. Uh, and then uh, very last, the SAP customer care program. So you benefit from other customers' experience uh, in, the mig in the migration uh, and the conversion uh, to S4 HANA. So you get a project coach, you get a development angel directly from the rig. So uh, in my estimation, the rig uh, are probably the smartest guys in the, in the, the, the smartest technical guys in the um, SAP ecosystem. And here's the best thing you'll hear today. You get... Um, a one-month free subscription to an MSSQL system uh, on ECC uh, in Hanson Pack 8, which uh, the readiness check is already run on, and you can practice your own conversion to S4 HANA over and over again until you get it right. So that's all part of the customer care program. So if those uh, if those six things weren't enough uh, to, to get you scribbling um, something into your um, into your browser, I, I don't know what is. Carl and Steve, let's have a bit of fun with a poll. So, uh, Absolutely. so let, over to you, Carl. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Tony. I mean, I'm feeling a bit uh, bland here. My background, you know, I don't have the lovely books and I haven't come with a treasure trove. I feel like, you know, a bit of an SAP pirate today. So, you know, delivering <laughs> on those fronts. But um, thank you very much. That amalgamation of information is fantastic, you know, and I think anyone in the audience, this is a really, really good, composite view of, you know, all of the aspects to take into account, you know, when thinking about, you know, either that upgrade or migration for an S4 HANA check. Um, I think one of the other things you've done here, Tony, as well, is, is a few questions that the audience can also ask themselves. And I think one of the polling questions we've actually got um, is, you know, how many of you out in the audience are planning on staying for as long as possible um, on the ECC platform? You know, who's sort of putting that off? And Tony, just to come back to some of the things you spoke about, I mean, when we look at the supportability, uh, not only just from the SAP side, but also in the other infrastructure, it's not surprising when we see so many people, you know, trying to put off that, you know, effort of migration towards S4 HANA, is it? I mean, we've got um, things around infrastructure, 
not just that from an SAP side of things, if we look at what um, Hasso Platner said in Sapphire in 2019 of November, you know, they're planning on doing a lot more releases a lot faster, coming out with a lot more velocity. And that sort of transitions into what we saw from an SAP HANA database supportability as well, doesn't it, with those short um, frequency cycles? Absolutely. So one of the things obviously we did want to look at um, from the audience perspective was, you know, looking at seeing how many of you are looking at, you know, staying on the ECC platform for as long as possible. And to sort of jump into what um, Tony has been talking about there, you know, this questionnaire I think here is a really good indication of looking at and sort of going through those checkpoints in regards to what's required, um, which is going to be your best option, whether it is, you know, a new Greenfields implementation or looking at a system conversion, because, you know, like Tony was mentioning, it's not just a straight, simple migration, is it? There's a lot of things to take into consideration. So there, we do have a few questions up here, which we will ask the audience, you know, go through and score yourself, have a look at each one of these questions, really think about as an organization where you're sitting and which way realistically, you know, you need to lean and make those decision points as well. And as Tony has mentioned, there's a huge amount of treasure trove that he's going to leave within this slide deck. He's providing all the links. Definitely go and have a look into those because I think one of the main things you need to look at here is a composite view, not just, you know, looking at, at straight from an SAP point only. And if we do jump to the next slide, what we can see is then we can see the benchmark here. So Tony, as you've mentioned, if you're scoring higher than 18 across all those questions, then obviously a conversion point would be excellent. If you're 18 or lower, then a new implementation realistically would be a better fit. Um, you know, good luck selling that to a few of the other components or people in the organization. But realistically, this is coming from someone with a huge amount of expertise um, and, you know, really can provide that background for you as well. So I think let's have a quick look at those poll results, um, Steve, absolutely, and see how people are faring. It'd be very interesting to see, you know, who's looking at uh, staying on the current platform and delaying that migration for as long as possible while, you know, SAP maybe comes out with another date change as well. Wonderful. All right, so let's have a look. Okay. So at the moment, looking here, let's have a look. Results, showing results, wonderful. I think we're having a few more technical difficulties with that, so that's all right. We'll come back to that one as well. Same with the videos um, on that side. So it's yeah, it's one of those things when we look at it live, isn't it? But if we jump forward um, to I guess, a couple of other slides we've put together as well, if we look at the, the application evolution that's happened, and I mean, Tony, you, you've been involved since the R2 days, and you've probably seen this evolution happen, you know, for a long time, is that, you know, nowadays, it's more than just, you know, a back-end process. A lot of organizations are relying on SAP to really drive the core functions of their business across all platforms, you know, not just from back-end and logistics, but now for HR, for finance. You know, a lot of our customers as well are looking at things on the core banking aspect in the SAP world as well. So if we look at that, we've now got a huge amount of change that's occurring. And if we also jump to that, we can look at what SAP's own mandate is, which is they're now basically saying to us, um, and I look like I'm having some technical difficulties on my side, is that their mandate for the S4 HANA platform is effectively that they want to deliver changes faster. Um, they want to optimize value. They want to basically push forward and, you know, effectively deliver as fast as possible. So with over half of you saying that you want to stay on ECC as long as possible, that's where we want to really look at, you know, how do we optimize and understand how we're going to keep that migration running or, or when we are eligible from migration or Greenfields component. Now, from a tri-center side of things, the main area that we look at is previously being the automation and the quality validation of uh, SAP enhancements, releases, and migrations. So what we have found is that the majority of the problems and the majority of the effort that's actually spent on upgrading a platform is actually involved in the testing component. Uh, traditionally, whether it's automated or manual, what we found is the majority of effort is spent in you know, gaining business access to resources, in driving that expertise and moving forward with trying to get that release going. So, you know, a quarter of the budget realistically in the IT world is actually spent on quality validation, which is a huge chunk uh, of time and effort for something that a lot of people don't see has a lot of ROI. And within those testing challenges, I mean, again, complex infrastructure, as Tony's shown, you know, it's not just SAP. We've got a whole lot of infrastructure that's sitting in the back end, um, you know, delivering web services, delivering database platforms that not only 
has its own frequency of change, but has to seamlessly work with the SAP platform itself. So, you know, something as simple as potentially, you know, patching a server or patching a database can have potentially far reaching components that we actually can't see um, with, as an end user. The other component as well, as I mentioned, is those releases are getting faster, right? So SAP themselves have made a mandate. They're restructuring the organization to move into a much more agile way of delivery. And that's effectively why from an S4 side of things, they are going to be delivering, you know, patches at a much more frequent and balanced than what they have in the past with R3 and ECC, which again, gives its own level of challenges as well. The end thing is, I'm sure for a lot of you who are on this uh, webinar today is you're probably an overloaded business or end user. You don't have time effectively to step into a program to help with an upgrade and do your day job at the same time. It's kind of that double-edged sword. So we looked at how we can assist in that regards. And I guess that's where the life compare component was an acquisition that we bought in, in order to help us deliver an analysis. And, and one of the things that we looked at, as Tony's mentioned before, um, a sort of a migration assessment checklist in regards to looking at things at a much deeper and technical level and, and utilizing a tool set in order for us to do that. So from a development standpoint, things like, you know, do we have custom code that that's going to break? You know, do we have any custom code that we can retire? Is it no longer in use anymore? And how complex and, and what's the quality like of that as well? And to run a manual assessment of these things, you know, it's going to take a huge amount of time, effort and resources, which is not really feasible in a lot of cases. It's just something that you want to do. Again, the other component is integrations. You know, who's you know, receiving data from SAP or our stack, you know, and who's effectively going to look at the interfaces and, and what are the interface contracts looking like on that side as well? Do we have any changes when we migrate to a new platform? Again, with security, do we have any roles that are impacted? Are we going to have people who potentially have access to things that they shouldn't? Um, do we have people who are going to be downgraded and do they have the right abilities to do their job moving forward? And of course, validating all that on the testing component is, well, what are the things that are the most at risk? Because at the end of the day, when we are making a move to a new platform, whether it is greenfield, brownfield or bluefield, then realistically, there is no time to validate absolutely everything. And so often what we will end up doing is, you know, de-risking and de-platforming things that we see as not required in order to do that. So we in the past have looked at a lot of things around automation, but we thought, you know, planning, sorry, failing to plan is realistically planning to fail. And that's where we effectively made the acquisition of the IntelliCorp Life Compare platform to, to build into um, that component as well. And if you look at a standard SAP deployment, you know, you can then say to yourself, well, how do you determine a, a technical change, you know, before migration or before a new implementation? And if you look at that in that respect, you can see that everything is built around the data dictionary within the SAP world. So on top of that, we'll sit your standard code. What, what SAP ships out of the box to you? Now, it's very, very rare that anyone would use something straight out of the box effectively they will build custom components whether that's you know transactions or programs on top of that which will sit on top of the, that standard code which then means on top of all of that you have a testable surface area now what do we mean by a testable surface area well effectively any transaction any program uh, whether that's fiori as well or an api an interface or a user effectively will consume parts of this information within the ABAP stack so if you were to go through and poll and look at everything within implementation on, well, what is going to be impacted by this migration? Um, there is no way you'd be able to do that by yourself or manually. There's no way you'd be able to do that um, within a team without spending a huge amount of effort and months in order to do so. And as we mentioned before, with the frequency of change from SAP themselves coming up and increasing, that is not going to be something that's feasible effectively moving forward. So the way we look at things is by the deployment of life impaired in an SAP environment um, and looking at how do we start. So everything in that regard sort of fits around an, an application change or a migration component. And then from there as well, we're looking at, you know, the code quality of, well, effectively how good is that code as we mentioned before, and what do we need to deprecate or improve on? And then run an impact analysis to determine what that change is, test those changes, run an audit to make sure that testing was complete and then push forward into a release assurance to move into something where we'll effectively have you know, zero defects that will impact that component as well. And then what we do want to drive to is you know, a lot lower rate in order to do that as well. And I think one of the things that um, you touched on before, Tony, as well, was in regards to the, the strategy of maintenance as well. Um, having customer-specific maintenance is no guarantee that you know, SAP will actually deliver um, a functional change 
or a functional enhancement, even with that contract's in place, effectively they're going to be stuck with um, BAU releases until they move on to the next version. So there is that level of risk there in, in, in with taking into account the customer specific maintenance, isn't there? Oh yeah. Uh, so I think one of the other areas that we did want to sort of you know look at um, from an audience perspective is you know if people do feel they are ready to you know migrate towards the S4 HANA stack, um, I think we'll sort of push that polling question out now to the audience and feel if they're actually ready to you know move forward on that journey because uh, it'd be very interesting where we had um, you know I think fifty one percent of people saying yep we're ready to stay on ECC for as long as it takes. Um, but you know, it would be very interesting to see that even for those that are in the middle of that migration or potentially in the starting phases of planning, if they do feel that they have the confidence and are actually ready uh, to move forward as well. So that would be very interesting if um, people in the audience wanted to have a look at that polling question as well. So I think one of the big things will be um, looking in the future about thinking about not only the migrational component, but how those completing and releasing those changes moving forward, which are getting quicker, are going to be maintained uh, and how they're going to be managed moving forward as well. So with that, what I might do, Tony, is I might throw back to you because I know that we have a few videos still to run through and some questions as well directly from the audience. So do you want to um, pop in, Tony, and we'll see if we can get some of these videos that we were unable to play moving forward again? Yeah, but beforehand, I just want to add, uh, w w w when customers agree to do the migration or conversion across to S4HANA, they have to adopt the future state cadence uh, of releases coming through from SAP. So in the older days, we would take, you know, one support pack every six months or maybe an enhancement pack every 12 months. But now with S4HANA, we've got... Uh, we, we've got a, an advent of a, of a thing called uh, a feature package stack. So SAP is recommending strongly that customers take four feature package stacks a year. So th there's not many organisations who are coming off an ECC system who are geared, you know, from a from an approval testing, uh, you know, for, from. For, for many, uh, you know, insert your favorite IT process here. There's there's not many organizations who were geared for that. So the, the on on your uh, on your arrow there, the the, the whole impact analysis uh, testing uh, and and then uh, you know assurance to minimize the amount of defects is just key going forward. So I just want everyone on the call to understand that the conversion to S4 HANA is just step one. Uh, in the, I, I guess, in the evolution of the new world. So we're, it's it's no longer your, your grandma's e ECC system. This, this is a, a, a brand new um, way of doing IT. Absolutely. And I think you hit the nail on the head there, Tone, because you're right. The system migration is one thing, but the next thing is obviously gearing up for the new way of working to align with how frequent these releases are coming through. Um, we, we did have one example, I think, in Bose. I think I do have a slide here, actually. Um, when we started working with them, they migrated from ECC to S4 HANA. And initially, you know, there was a huge amount of struggling in regarding, you know, supporting SAP packs, not only those release packs, but also custom releases that they were doing themselves uh, internally with the development team. And, you know, effectively, they needed something in order to help with impact analysis as well as code quality analysis in parallel. Um, and, you know, they, we were able to help them, you know, move up to a 350% increase of, of those releases um, because of live compare as well as increase the level of custom testing. Um, but, you know, it, it's not to say that that was the be all and end all because, I mean, on the next slide, what we'll see is initially the, the amount of effort involved was, you know, huge. You know, the amount of gaps that they had in regards to their quality checking was quite large. You know, it was around 681 scenarios or use cases that they'd missed. Um, and after the 20th release, it got to the point where they'd been able to use that information to build a proper regression set where they only had one gap, which is which is amazing. But there is a lot of effort up front, you know, to sort of stage yourself and get ready for this. And I think um, that is one thing, if I can sort of say to the audience that it's, um, you're right, the migration is just the starting point, right? There's a lot more work to do after that as well. 
So, you know, my my, my background is uh, everyone knows me uh, as a solution manager guy. So the, the two most impressive things that I love the most on solution manager is the business process change analyzer and their custom code lifecycle management. And it, it would it would be, you know, a pleasure for me to deploy those for anybody. But any customer that I go to, that's the least adopted <laughs> bit of functionality in the system. So, you know, every time I go in there and say solution manager, you get you get the groan on the other side of the table. So, uh, again, uh, if you're not going to prepare uh, what you currently got for the uh, conversion to S4HANA, maybe you want to look at some of the uh, accelerators and uh, out of the can offerings uh, that uh, you're talking about, Carl. Absolutely. Wonderful. Well, look, I'll throw it back to you, Tony, because I know we've got a couple of videos that we definitely want to get through um, with some fantastic information for our audience. So, uh, MG, I'm hoping we can now um, roll through with some of those videos. Hopefully, they're working now and get the audience to um, also forward a couple of questions forward if they have anything. So, you want to work out the benefits from an S4 HANA transformation and you want some buy-in from business executives. If this is your case, the SAP Business Scenario Recommendations Report, or BSR, is for you. Let's launch the Executive Summary. So in Executive Summary, you see that the BSR has analysed six lines of business and benchmarked each against peers. So first up, let's pick on the finance line of business. In the finance line of business, these are the findings particular to your company. In accounts payable, you have over 80,000 overdue finance AP items. This obviously impacts cash flow. As you can see, the age distribution of the problem manifests itself in two forms. One, you, must, you may have old data. You've got a number of receivables which are not collectible for over three years. So perhaps rubbish removal or cleaning up old data is the, the case. But if you have a look at the age distribution for zero to three and three to six months, there's over 20% of receivables which are not being made in six months. So there's definitely an opportunity for improvement. Once we compare ourselves against the industry benchmark, you'll notice that we're actually in the bottom 25% of the industry. Do we use the entity close? Based on the number of stars here, it is being used. So what can we do better should we pick up S4HANA? Some of the value drivers that we're looking for is to reduce the financial closing costs and reduce the audit costs. What we get in S4HANA with 1909, you get a new group financial reporting capability coupled with predictive accounting. So to have a look at these uh, additional um, business scenarios and improvements, you have some op opportunities. There are a number of additional be business benefits. Let's take a look at other recommendations. So based on the usage intensity of, of your particular customer, you can see that we're using 76 transactions in financial accounting. There are additional business benefits which could be unlocked by using S4HANA 1909. Now, navigating back to the executive summary, you will have noticed a distinct lack of SAP terminology and acronyms. The SAP PSR is a fact-based interactive report which is tailor-made for the customer by analysing a number of ERP statistics. It can show the benefits to the business for undertaking an S4HANA transformation. Wonderful. So Tony, that was really useful. Um, and I mean, it doesn't take a huge amount of time to do, right? But this is a great sort of staging area to assist because I think a lot of the times, you know, like you said, it can be an uphill battle in regards to the direction people need to choose for their migration. But this is a really handy asset, right, for anyone that needs to help and, and sort of help put that business case forward from their division, isn't it? That's right. So this, this is... The readiness check is accessible from the one...
This is, this is a report the technical people run for the business to get approval for the uh, for the uh, for the project. I mean, uh, you can't do this as uh, BAU or skunks work. You need uh, you know a, a real life uh, budget. You need uh, project managers to to plan this thing out. In the old days, the deployment uh, of an R three used to take two years. I mean, there's very few who could do it in less than two years. These days, we expect a conversion from R three to S four to happen overnight. It, again, it's not an upgrade. It's a system conversion. So if you have a look at, at the chart conversion uh, versus Greenfield, if you, if you haven't got extended general ledger or if you've got you know, non-unicode, that, that's there are two hurdles that you're going to have to jump before you actually get to the point where you, you're ready to go. If, if, you, if you've got payroll inside your, your system, that, that needs to be considered and it needs to be stripped out. Uh, and then you've got to consider the adoption of the software as a service offerings from SAP. So what do you do for success factors? What do you do for Ariba, for procurement? All, all, of these, all of these products are now being pretty much deprecated inside S4 because there's a software as a service equivalent. So if you're doing, if you're doing the system conversion, you're actually voting for digital transformation. So you're trying to make your business leaner and, and better. So these things don't happen overnight. You need, you need a project. So the BSR is, is non-negotiable. That's the first thing you've got to do. Once you've got buy-in from the business, then you can run the readiness check. The readiness check is a bunch of uh, uh, technical checks to find out what you can front-end load. That is what you can do today to lessen the blow. What's an example of what you could do today? Well, if, if your database is, is 20 terabytes, it's going to cost you a ton of money to get a, a HANA um, um, infrastructure to support that, plus the time to convert it is just going to kill you. It would be better to do the rubbish removal to get it down nice and lean, uh, to remove custom code you don't want, to remove modules that aren't going to be supported going forward, uh, and get yourself fighting fit before you do the conversion. If I can interject here um, and ask a question, uh, Steve Morris, um, if you have, we, look, we've got a hundred percent of the audience that stayed with us. We had to restart again at the beginning, and so we're, we're six or seven minutes over. But if I were to ask you both to think how you'd want to sum this up, the key message you'd want to leave everyone with for two minutes, perhaps each of you, Carl and Tony, uh, Tony, perhaps starting with you, what um, what would you like to what would you like to sum up by saying in in your last two minutes before we hand over to Carl. Uh, okay, customers need to understand the SAP maintenance strategy uh, and the impact on the entire stack. It's not just about SAP, it's about the full stack. It's okay to stay on ECC if you want. If you do want to move, you need to do it properly. You need to understand the difference between Greenfield and Brownfield. There also is another beast known as Bluefield. But again, that's not an official uh, SAP recommended approach. So consider understanding the maintenance phases and please have a look at your own drivers. Fill out that uh, the, the, the chart which, com which compares conversion versus Greenfield and find out what matters to you. Excellent. And Carl? Absolutely. So just to reiterate as well on, on what Tony said, I think, you know, the migration component, regardless of when it's being planned, is just the first step. Um, you know, organizations will need to be ready to sort of change the way that they're working within the SAP landscape. And in order to do that, they need to prepare to have the right processes, people, um, you know, the right sort of, I guess, not just the emotional intelligence component, but I mean, really the ability to adapt and change the way that they work with the right tool sets in order to move forward. Um, and not to rush, it's again, as in, you can see there's a huge amount of information that Tony's presented here and it's very, very great to have him on board because he is so knowledgeable in this area. Um, but this is something that needs to be properly planned and with everything to take into consideration. It's, it's definitely not something that you want to run in an agile way, you know, and I say that with inverted commas. Um, it's something that you want to plan well, take into account everyone's, you know, components and do it right the first time. Uh, and like Tony said, I think one of the other things to consider is, you know, don't bring the rubbish with you. Uh, make sure that you're clean, lean and ready to move forward. So if I can just say in conclusion, a huge thanks to our great friends at Tricentis for hosting and sponsoring this webinar. Tricentis, of course, are the 
diamond sponsor of the Mastering SAP series. And we're just so thankful that they got involved and brought this webinar to us. A big thanks to Carl Wood from Tricentis and to Tony de Tomasis, the guru. Tony, thanks so, so much for all your insights, your energy, uh, your experiences. We really, really valued that. Please reach out to either of the speakers as you see fit. Uh, we look forward to hearing more from you. And if you go to the masteringsapconference.com website, you can go see what other webinars we have in the offing over the next few months. Thanks so, so much again to all of you for giving up your time. Take great care, and we'll catch up with you soon.